code in my poem is my robot. I told my robot to do my bidding, and he yawned and said, you must be kidding. I told my robot to cook me a stew, and he said, I got better things to do. I told my robot to sweeten my snack. He said, you want me to straighten my back? I told my robot to answer the phone. He said, I must make some calls of my own. I told my robot to bring me some tea. He said, why don't you make tea for me? I told my robot to boil me an egg. He said, first, Lyman, here you beg. I told my robot, there's a song you can play me. He said, how much are you gonna pay me? So I sold that robot because I never knew exactly who belonged to who. a kid and a mom. Why, why can't you see I'm a cat, said the cat, and that's all I'll ever be. Why are you shocked when I roam out at night? Why are you sad when I meow and I fright? I'm a cat. Why can't you see I'm a kid, said the kid. Why try to make me like you? Why try to hurt when I don't want to cuddle? Why do you scream when I am, when I do what I did? I'm a kid. Why can't you see I'm a mom, said mom. Why try to make me wise? Why try to teach me the ways of the, of the cat? Why try, tell, why try to tell me that kids are like that. Why well, try to make me patient and calm? I'm a mom. I'm Julian's and I'm going to be reading crazy dreams. Last night I had a crazy dream that I was teaching school. My teachers had turned into kids and I laid down the rules. I gave them a hundred history books to memorize each night and made them read them on their heads without turning on the light. I sent them on a field trip to the uh, outskirts of Magalia and gave them an overnight assignment to go a 20-foot purple Magalia. I asked them how many awful grades can cause how many tears, and if they got one answer wrong, I just hang them up by their ears. And when they walked, talked, or laughed in class, I had pinched them until they cried louder and louder until I woke up <coughs> feeling very satisfied. And I'm reading Falling Up. I trembled on my shoelace and I fell up, up to the rooftop, over the town, up over the town. Up past the treetop, up over the mountains, up where the color, the where the colors blend into the sound. But it got me so dizzy. I when I looked around, it, it, I got sick to my stomach and I threw down. My name is Brayden Calhoun. I am reading the snowball. I made myself a snowball. As perfect as could be, I thought I'd keep it as a pet and let it sleep with me. I made it so some pajamas and a pillow for its head. Then last night it ran away, but first it wet the bed. Crystal ball, come to your life in my crystal glass. 25 cents is all you pay. Let me look into your past. Here's what you had for lunch today. Tuna salad and mashed potatoes, green pea soup and apple juice, collard greens and stewed tomatoes, chocolate milk and lemon rose. You admit I showed it all well, I know what I confess. Not by looking in my ball, but just by looking at your dress. My name is Weston Ward and I'm reading The Monkey. One little monkey was going to the store when he 
saw the man at three he never climbed before. By five o'clock that evening, he was six with a stomach ache, caught, caused seven green bananas, what that monkey ate. By nine o'clock that evening, that monkey was quite oh ill, so ten we called the doctor, who was eleven on the hill. The doctor said, you are almost dead, don't eat green bananas no more. The sick little monkey groaned and said, but that's what I want to the three for. Taft and I, this is Morgan's purse. Following the trail on the old treasure, treasure map, I came to the spot that said dig right here and four feet down my spade struck wood. But just where the map said a chest would appear, but carved in the side were these written, were these words, a curse upon he who served these gold. Signed Mer Morgan the Pirate. The, Screwed as a sea. I read these words and my blood ran cold. So here I sat upon the toe of the boat, trying to figure which is worse. How much do I need this gold? And how much do I need this curse? I am Laura Dawn, so I'm going to be reading Mirror Mirror. Mirror, mirror, on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? Snow White, Snow White, Snow White, I've told you millions of times tonight. Mirror, mirror, on the wall, what would happen if I let you fall? You'd shatter to bits with a clang and crash. Your glass would be splintered, swept out with the trash. Your frame would be bit, lying here on the floor. Hey, just go ahead, just ask me once more. Mirror, mirror, on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? You, you, it's true, the fairest of all is you, you, you. Phew! <laughs> Watson and I'm going to be reading the scale. If I could only see the scale, I'm sure would, that it would state that I've lost ounces, maybe pounds, or even tons of weight. You better eat some pancakes, you're skinny as a rail. I'm sure that's what the scale would say, if I could see the scale. My name is Susanna Nix, and I'm reading more out of paint so. Let's paint a picture with our food. For red, we'll squeeze these cherries. For purple, let's splash, let's splash grape juice on. For blue, we'll use these blueberries. For black, just use some leverish. For brown, pour on some gravy. For yellow, you can dip your brush in the egg yolk you just gave me. We'll sign your na our names in applesauce and title it our luncheon. And hang it up for everyone to stop, stop, see, and munch on. And I'm reading the gnome, the net, and the gnome. I saw a little gnome take take a gnat, take a gnat, and a gnat who was nibbling the nose of his balloon. I said, "Nasty gnome, gnome, stop doing that. That gnat ain't done nothing to you." He not he he gnawed his gnarled hands <laughs> and till gnaw, gnaw, gnaw. That knocking a gnat in a gnoodle like that was not a nice thing to do.
My name is Tess Stevens, and I am reading Pinocchio. Pinocchio, Pinocchio, that little wooden bloke you. His nose it grew an inch or two with every lie he spoke you. Pinocchio, Pinocchio, thought life was just a joke you. Till the morning that he met that cat and the fox in a red long cloak you. They cried, come on, Pinocchio, we'll entertain the folk you. On puppet strings you'll dance and sing from Timbuktu to Tokyo. Pinocchio, Pinocchio, got sold to a traveling Shokyo. Got put in a cage by a man in rage and, s and a stick to give him a Pokyo. So Pinocchio, Pinocchio, out of that cage he broke you to the land where boys just play with toys and cuss and fight and smoke you. Pinocchio, Pinocchio, he finally awoke you with donkey ears and little boy tears. And his poor wooden heart was broke you. So back home ran Pinocchio as fast as he could go. You. But his daddy had he had gone to sea, so off to sea went Pinocchio. Pinocchio, Pinocchio, he got quite a Pinocchio. When he lost his sail and got ate by a whale, and it looked like he was going to croak you. But Pinocchio, Pinocchio, the fire he did stoke you inside that whale who sneezed up gale and blew out him in the smoke you. Pinocchio, Pinocchio, next morning he awoke you, and then he had no puppet strings or puppety things, and his donkey ears had disappeared. And it's no surprise, it was the normal size, and his body felt fine, not made of pine. And he cried, oh joy, I'm a little boy, and everything was okay. Getting done, and I'm reading unfair. They don't allow pets in this apartment. That's not decent. That's not fair. They don't allow pets in this park. This apartment. They don't listen. They don't even care. I told them he's quiet and never does bark. I told them he'd do all the stuff in the park. I told him he's cuddly and friendly, and yet they won't allow pets. My name is Grace Martin, and I'm, and I'm reading Shoe Talk. There is no one to talk with. I, I'll i talk with my shim. He does have a tongue and an and inner soul to his awful, well polished, not so string laced and neat, but he talks about nothing but feet, feet, feet. My name is Ethan Bradley, and I'm doing toy, the toy eater. You don't have to pick up your toys, okay? You can leave them out right there on the floor. So tonight when the terrible toy eater took off, comes tiptoeing into the crack up in the door. He'll crunch all your soldiers, he'll munch on your trucks, he'll chew your poor puppets to shreds, You'll swallow your big wheel and slough off your pants and bite off your dear dog's heads. Then he'll wipe off his lips with the sails of your ship and making a bumpety noise. He'll slither away, but hey, that's okay. You don't have to pick up your toys. and I'm reading No Thank You. No, I do not want a kitten. No cute, cuddly kitty poo. No more long hair and my cornflakes. No more midnight meow and mews. No more scratch and scarlet and spitters. No more sofas clawed to spreads. No more smell of kitty litter. No more mouses in my bed. No, I will not take that kitten. I've had blasts and I've had fleas. I've been scratched and I've been sprayed and I feel like allergies. If you've got a mate, I'll take him. If you have a lion, that's fine. If you brought some walk and bacon, leave him here, I'll treat him kind. I have room for mice and gerbils. I have beds for boars and bats. But please, please take that away, that kitten. Quick, for it becomes a cat. Well, it is kind of cute at that. 